and National Party leader Judith Collins is with me. Good morning to you. Good morning, Chris. The government will pilot a scheme for vaccinated travellers to travel overseas and self-isolate at home from October through to December. Is that a start in the right direction? Is this a government that's trying to be more relaxed with its COVID-19 strategy? Uh, well, I think it's the government that's understanding that the population of New Zealand is saying why are we last in the developed world when it comes to vaccinations. It's pretty clear is that the government should be uh, looking at alternatives, but they can't do anything if they don't get the vaccine rollout and they continue to allow port workers and others uh, to not be vaccinated and to be possible vectors for Delta variant of COVID-19 to get into the community. This new report on getting the borders open says we'll have to wait until the vaccine rollout is complete. And that's the trouble, isn't it? Because it's not complete and it does appear to be slower than what the government initially said it would be. Yes, well, it's significantly slower. Uh, we've been told all sorts of dates, all sorts of promises around the vaccine, and that's the problem. So we cannot continue to be the hermit kingdom forever, but being able to be rejoining part of the world or, or the world, we are going to have to have vaccination vaccinate, vaccinate basically, and then next year we're going to need to have booster jabs just like we do with our winter flu jabs. Um, and that is actually the secret. And we do need incentives for people to get vaccinated. And those incentives may well be around travel. It may well be around having being able to avoid MIQ. It may well be all those things, but also the government needs to have a proper system, uh, a vaccine passport, something even on their phones like Singapore have got in their COVID tracing app um, and we don't have it at all. So they need to do all those things and they've had now 18 months to do it. In the report that was re released several days ago, it said New Zealand will still be vulnerable to an outbreak of the Delta variant. What's your view on that and in fact the entire report? Well, I think that we will be um, subject and vulnerable to the Delta variant while we're unvaccinated. And uh, even with vaccination, you can still get COVID, but um, the COVID that you get is going to be significantly less than the COVID that you get naturally in terms of effect. And that's very clear. Um, you can still get something from a vaccine, you know, after a vaccination, that you can still get um, some form of COVID, but you're not talking about the same level of COVID response and your, your body's ability to deal with it than you do if you are unvaccinated. Does this give you some confidence though? I mean the headlines this morning, New Zealand reset approach with faster vaccine rollout, border reopening trials this year. Is that reactionary or is that just simply a step in the right direction that we're sorting it out? We're realising that we can't be, as you describe, a hermit kingdom forever. Well, I think it's both those things. I think the government is absolutely panicked by the fact that they've seen what's happening to governments that haven't been seen to be front footing the vaccination rollout. They're now coming up with this as some sort of reset. Well, why is there a need for a reset when we've been promised all these things earlier this year, February, March, April? The Prime Minister was was promising that port workers would be vaccinated. Turns out most of them aren't. Uh, they're being allowed to go on to ships where there is COVID. Uh, these people are unvaccinated. They, it is an enormous risk, not only for them, but more so for the whole country. The government is, and the scare report is, still, is talking about a level four lockdown, all these sorts of things. I mean, they, they have absolutely stuffed up the whole vaccine rollout. And vaccines should be with GPs and pharmacists, people that uh, we trust and people that people know. The advice in this report included a caveat that says no one really knows what the COVID hit world would look like in three, five years times or even six months times. That makes it harder to offer promises of borders reopening though, doesn't it? It certainly does. Uh, so it is though important that there is no alternative to vaccination for any opening of borders. And when we're looking at MIQ and people being able to isolate at home, the people isolating at home when the COVID first hit earlier last year, and we didn't get any problems with that. We have mechanisms to deal with it, but the government has been very slow on it. And I, 
I just think they, they seem to quite enjoy lockdowns. Um, we can't afford these lockdowns. We can't afford to have people not able to come home to see loved ones when they're dying. We can't afford to everybody to be put on hold while the government get, gets its act together. And they need to get... I don't understand why the Ministry of Health is so hell-bent on setting up big public immunisation centres when we've got GPs and pharmacists already in our community and already people that we trust. Well, it's interesting you say, I've been speaking to several pharmacists here in Christchurch who have been saying, we can do the jabs, we're waiting, give us the give us the stuff and we'll go for it. A big story here in Christchurch today, no doubt you're aware of it, it's the stadium today, the Christchurch City Councillors are going to debate again the size of the Canterbury multi-use arena after staff had to admit they got the costs wrong for a third time, although they're saying it was just uh, uh, presenting more information to the table. So first of all, it was, what, $88 million more for a 30,000 seat uh, stadium, then it was 70, now it's 50. Um, it doesn't leave me with much confidence in whoever is running the show, and I don't know who that person is. No, no it doesn't, but I just want Christchurch to get a 30,000 seat stadium. Just do it. Stop messing around. Stop talking about it. Every time they sit there, talk about it, have another report, have another law, you think another year's gone by and the costs go up. So just get on with it. Back the people of Christchurch. Back the ability of us to come and be there. Just do it. It's amazing that it's another third report coming out saying, you know, it's not as much as we thought. But anyway, we'll find out later today. Just finally, I want to touch base with you on this climate change report. Um, some of it was kind of scary. Other, uh, most of it was already information that was in the public domain. What's your sense of that? And has this given you focus to perhaps uh, change any of National Party policies on climate change? No. Um no, not at all. I, I just don't get why. Um, every, every report, every talking about climate change fails to deal with the elephant in the room. Is that New Zealand? We can do our bit. We have to do our bit. We have to be part of a world solution. But we are actually not the problem. And until countries like China, the US, Russia, India, just Europe generally, when they start playing their part and actually making changes, then what we do will make a difference. But we can be leaders around technology and changes and emissions and all those sorts of things, but we will not make one scrap of difference while we're buying in 2 million tonnes of Indonesian coal to keep the lights on in Auckland and the Waikato because the government has stuffed up the supply of natural gas which is much more clean burning than coal so you know until they sort themselves out um it's it's not going to make a blind bit of difference and we've got to just do our bit do what we can but do not destroy ourselves in the meantime judith just finally um a leaked document the umr document uh, has been uh, leaked online. It says the Prime Minister will probably be anxious given the fact the latest polls from this says Labour is at 38%, National 31%, Act 13, Greens 8. So the gap appears to be narrowing. What's your take on that? Well, my take is that that uh, is how I feel it's going, but we've, we never get too excited about polls because they go up and down, hmm. but Labour really do get very excited about polls, and I guess that that's you know, I expect we'll probably hear something more about, I don't know, a dress, a feeling, um, a vibe, a wedding or something. But I can tell you this, it won't be about the things that matter to New Zealanders.